How did this happen? Although science has advanced significantly, we still know relatively little about the universe beyond our planet. The grandeur of the night sky has always fascinated scientists, but there have never been enough resources to fully explore it. One of them is the supernova puzzle. Some stars burst into a dazzling last stand known as a supernova when their fuel supply runs out or they suddenly get a surge of new material. The most frequent kind of supernova appears to be 200 times less strong than this new object. A lot of what we know about the cosmos is being disrupted by the cataclysmic explosion of this super red behemoth that scientists have managed to photograph. What is unique about this supernova and how did it occur? What impact will that have on the cosmos? And most importantly, how will this affect you? Let's find out. When Beetlejuice is mentioned, the undead prankster from the same named film Beetlejuice could be the first thing that springs to mind. The star of the same name, one of the brightest celestial objects we can see in our sky, is most likely being referred to when the term Beetlejuice is used by a group of scientists though. As some think it might mean the end of our species and the Earth, some others also find it fascinating. On the upper right shoulder of the winter constellation Orion, the Hunter is where you may find the dazzling ruby-red scintillating star known as Betelgeuse. Astronomers, however, recognize it as a seething monster with a 400-day-long heartbeat of regular pulsations when they look at it carefully. Betelgeuse is easily recognized due to its depressing orange-red tint. It's perfect for demonstrating to skeptics that stars do, in fact, have various colors. The second brightest star in the constellation, after the blue supergiant Regal, is often referred to as Alpha Orionis. Because of its changeable nature and peculiar name, Betelgeuse makes for an interesting object for astronomical research and observations. Betelgeuse's actual distance from Earth is unknown, however, astronomers estimate it to be between 430 and 724 light-years away. The brightest red supergiant star and the one that is closest to Earth is Betelgeuse. Betelgeuse's radius is around 764 times greater than the our Sun. It would extend across the asteroid belt and even beyond Jupiter if this star took the place of our Sun in the solar system. This implies the total absorption of Earth, Mars, Mercury and Venus. Every 10,000 years, Betelgeuse loses around one solar mass. Because this material was being thrown unevenly from the red star in all directions, a nebula has formed around it. Betelgeuse is surrounded by a cloud of matter that is 250 times bigger than this star. Also, it is estimated that the size of this nebula is 30 astronomical units, AU, or 30 times the Sun-Earth distance. Solar flare is the name given to the mass that our solar system's sun periodically ejects into space. The occurrence is referred to as a coronal mass ejection because the sun only exhales tiny pieces of its outer atmosphere or corona, CME. As a result, surface mass ejections and coronal mass ejections can happen independently of one another. A CME is created when a star expels a piece of its erratic outer atmosphere, known as the corona. Our solar system routinely produces CMEs, which have the potential to affect Earth and its inhabitants. When CMEs discharge magnetic fields and plasma into space at speeds of more than 1,800 miles per second, their disturbances occasionally reach Earth in a couple of hours. When it happens on the side of the Sun that faces Earth, a CME can disrupt and damage satellites and power infrastructures, and it occasionally puts people in orbit in danger. The most recent findings clarified the exceptional reason for Betelgeuse's dimming in 2019. Betelgeuse's light was obscured from Earth-based observers by a cloud of cosmic dust created as the star's material expelled and burst into space, cooled and formed. The famed steadiness of Betelgeuse's pulsating rhythm has also changed. According to a NASA news release, the CME on Betelgeuse is exceptional because it expelled 400 billion times more mass than a typical CME, which made the star quiver like a dish of gelatin pudding. 
A newborn star is comprised of hydrogen, which, when subjected to gravity, fuses together at the center of the star to produce helium in a nuclear explosion. During the fusion process, a lot of heat and light energy is normally emitted. As it approaches the star's surface, this energy emits a photon into space. The star's main fuel, hydrogen, runs out as it ages, and helium begins to fuse with carbon to make carbon. Neon will eventually react with carbon to make iron after the helium has been consumed. This causes the fusion of neon and iron to absorb energy rather than release it. When iron starts to fuse, the star collapses in on itself due to the lack of anything to obstruct the star's extremely strong gravity, resulting in a supernova explosion. One of nature's most potent forces, a supernova can produce more energy than 10 billion suns. Bigger stars usually exhaust their hydrogen more quickly and go extinct sooner. Betelgeuse, albeit only about 10 million years old, is undoubtedly nearing the end of its life. On the other hand, our Sun, which is almost 5 billion years old, is still in its prime. Furthermore, a supernova could happen soon because Betelgeuse is nearing the end of its life. Betelgeuse experiences two dimming and brightening cycles, the second of which lasts roughly 100 days and happens about every five years. Throughout this cycle, the star's outer shell is theorized to grow and shrink, affecting the star's circumference and average temperature as the cycle progresses. Betelgeuse has been observed traveling through the interstellar medium at a speed of 30 kilometers per second after being evicted from its former home in the Orion OB-1 Association, which includes the stars in Orion's belt. This accelerating star is generating a bow shock that is more than four light years wide. Betelgeuse started to decrease significantly in October 2019, and by mid-February 2020 had lost around three times as much brightness, from magnitude 0.5 to magnitude 1.7. Betelgeuse's brightness had been consistent for over 10 days by February 17th of 2020, and the star had begun to brighten once more. Yet five days later, Betelgeuse looked to have entirely stopped dimming, essentially concluding the dimming episode. It seems that the recent visual fading was unconnected to the projected core collapse because there were no discernible changes in the infrared on February 24, 2020. That same day, another investigation came to the conclusion that the star's dimming was most likely due to large-grain circumstellar dust occluding. A study that makes use of data at submillimeter wavelengths finds that dust absorption is unlikely to have a substantial impact. Large star spots, however, seem to be the reason for the fading. Further investigation revealed a sharp increase in Betelgeuse's brightness. The star had dimmed by 0.5 from the previous ground-based observation in April, according to measurements conducted with the Stereo A satellite in June and July of 2020. Everyone was taken aback by this, since it was anticipated that the maximum and next minimum would take place in August-September 2020 and April 2021 respectively. Betelgeuse's brightness was known to fluctuate greatly, making forecasts challenging. A second dimming event may occur far sooner than anticipated, according to the fading. On August 30th, 2020, researchers discovered a second dust cloud emerging from Betelgeuse that was connected to a recent significant reduction of the star's light. A core region on its photosphere was postulated to be the source of the dust in June 2020, and the first theory was supported in August by a second independent examination. It is believed that the cooling of the gas the star released caused the dust to form. Occluding dust may have been produced by a surface mass ejection, according to research done in 2022 with the Hubble Space Telescope. Millions of kilometers away, the material was expelled from this star's surface, where it cooled, compacted, and became the star's fading dust. From the perspective of observers on Earth, the star was obscured by a dust cloud caused by the fractured photosphere, which was roughly several times as heavy as our moon. Even backyard watchers who saw the star's brightness drop 
could clearly see the fading, which started in late 2019 and lasted for a few months. What's more amazing is that the supergiant's 400-day pulsation rate has stopped. Astronomers have been observing variations in Betelgeuse's surface motions and brightness variations for about 200 years in order to trace this cycle. The extent of the blow is revealed by its disturbance. Now, astronomers have created a possible explanation to explain the disruption. The photosphere is regenerating and the star is gradually regaining strength. The interior of the star is vibrating like a bell that has been hammered as its regular cycle is being disrupted. There has never before been evidence of a large star surface mass ejection. We still don't entirely understand what is happening, but something is. This novel event might be directly observed and we could use the James Webb Space Telescope to identify surface features. What time will the Betelgeuse explosion take place? Most likely not during our lifetimes. Nevertheless, nobody actually does. It might happen tomorrow or in a million years. In reality, even if Betelgeuse explodes tomorrow, the world won't end. We are aware that more than one supernova has occurred in our region of the universe over the past few million years, even though it is difficult to predict all of a supernova's effects. According to the fossil record from that time, it is believed that neither of the two supernovae under study, which happened in stars twice as close to us as Betelgeuse, appeared to have harmed life in any way. But there is no evidence that they have changed the planet dramatically or dramatically altered the climate. Chemical proof of their existence exists. What damage may an exploding star cause to Earth before finding prime viewing spots for Betelgeuse's spectacular finale? Imagine that stars are similar to nuclear power facilities. You're looking at a tragedy of cosmic proportions if they blow up. We were almost 10 times too far away from the explosion to see any consequences, yet things would be different if we weren't. The radiation and gamma waves from the Betelgeuse explosion would destroy our atmosphere and cells if we were too close to it. Excessive radiation doses can cause skin burns, damage your genes, and if they continue for a long time, can even be fatal. In particular, gamma radiation is highly potent. More powerful even than light itself, it is pure energy. It would literally be lights out for all of us if Betelgeuse were closer. All living things, including people, animals and flora, would be destroyed. Even though the process of becoming a supernova takes years, an explosion that large from a star that huge would obliterate life on Earth in seconds once the radiation struck us. The explosion would not spare any planet in our solar system, even if we had interplanetary ships to leave in time. Betelgeuse is a truly massive star. There. Are you content? In this case, nobody escapes unscathed. Thankfully, we are too far away from Betelgeuse for the explosion to have any immediate, obvious or negative impact on us. Instead, everyone on Earth will have an incredibly spectacular vision of an extremely bright star in the night sky at that time. Finally, Betelgeuse's proximity will allow researchers to study the star during its supernova. The opportunity to witness Betelgeuse's spectacular eruption and recovery in the interval excites scientists. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.